Dan Steinberg of the Washington Post, the D.C. sports blog, who joins us now. All right, Dan. What is going on in your town here? Let's start with RG3. Well, I mean, it's hard to separate him from the 16 years of, of Dan Snyder's tenure as owner of the Redskins, where it's been kind of one rapid rise and rapid fall after another from, you know, Deion Sanders and Bruce Smith to the Spurrier years to Joe Gibbs is coming back to Mike Shanahan and RG3. I mean, it just, it just seems like we bring in big names here and we build them up and people go bananas and then it ends in chaos and tragedy. Well, I talked about this yesterday on the show that if I look at a successful franchise, I start at the top. And, and if you, it's not a coincidence. Normally you're going to find stability there. You're going to have, you know, somebody who's smart normally stays out of the way. Um, it, is that the problem, though? It, it, does it all, all signs point towards Dan Snyder as, you know, the biggest reason why your guys are two steps forward, two steps back? I would say two steps forward, like 17 steps back. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, whether it's fair or not, I think he, he has to take ownership um, of what's happened here. This has been, you know, it's not just one random thing that's happened here in August of 2015. It's something that we've seen over and over again. People come here with good reputations from, you know, Spurrier and, and Donovan McNabb and Mike Shanahan to Robert Griffin III. Griffin III, he was seen as bus proof. He was seen as a messiah. I mean, the way he was treated here in 2012 was unlike anything we've ever seen. He's been on the front page of the Washington Post literally more than any athlete in the history of this town. And now he's benched and being run out of town and fans are, you know, getting in really nasty fights with each other about this. And it's just kind of dissolved into total chaos. And so I don't see how he could not bear um, some responsibility for that. Okay. How does this end with the RG3 and the Redskins? You know, I mean, I don't have any inside information on that. I think anyone anyone who looks at the situation would agree it's best for them to part ways. It's best for both of them to part ways because Griffin doesn't want to be shown 15 times every week on the sidelines, you know, staring at Kirk Cousins. He doesn't want to have to do what he did last night, which I'm sure you saw, where, you know, his Instagram account liked uh, Instagram posts ripping the team and Dan Snyder, and then he had to come out with a statement that said his intern did it. I I mean, athletes have interns who run their social media accounts in the middle of the night. I don't know, but do, how, how many times do we want to do this this year? Do we want to do this every week? Do we want to do this two times a week? Kirk Cousins, they're trying to give Kirk Cousins a chance to see if he can be a starting NFL quarterback, and that's not going to be helped by Robert Griffin III being on the sidelines. But it's not that easy to get rid of him unless you just want to sort of cut your losses and say, this is it, we're going our separate ways. And first he would need to get cleared of this concussion before they can do that. Yeah, but but Dan Snyder has signed off on this, that he now knows that their relationship has to end, and it has to end badly here. I, I, I would assume so. I mean, they, they've had Thanksgiving dinner before. Maybe they can still have Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner together in the future. And but wasn't he the holdup, though, Dan, that, that, that Snyder didn't want to move on, and now Snyder's finally said, all right, I'm willing to move on from – from uh, RG3? Well, you know, the Post, we were reporting last year that, that Jay Gruden was ready to move on. I think in November we started reporting that. And obviously there were important people in the organization who felt differently, and they gave him the extension in yeah. the offseason and said it was a no-brainer and that they saw him as a starting quarterback. But at, at this point, at this point, Jay Gruden and Scott McLuhan are in charge of this decision, and, and they've said that they're moving on. Whether whether Dan Snyder is fully on board with that, I I mean, what's he going to do at this point? He's not going to clear everyone out and say, go home. At this point, the decision has been made, and they're going going in a different direction. What do you think the players, if you gave them a vote of who they wanted, RG3 or Cousins? I don't think it would be unanimous either way. I mean, certainly Griffin has some really good friends on the team and, and players that he's close with. Um, and certainly he's got a, a body of work, not just you know playing football, but – being, being pals with these guys, having sharing a locker room with them. I, I would guess that these guys have watched the same film that you and I have seen and, and have seen that Griffin was not likely, didn't seem like he was likely to succeed this year. And I would guess that a lot of them are, are happy to have a guy who, in Jay Gruden's offense, has looked significantly better. But I would guess it's going to be pretty close to, you know, it's going to be split. It would, be, it would be a split vote, I think. How good is the team? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. I think you know they're they're in the bottom tier according to odds makers, and I don't think that the quarterback was going to change that much one way or the other. I think the defense should be improved. They, you know, they've brought in a decent number of guys, and Scott McLuhan has a good track record of 
finding players both in the draft and to some extent free agency. I, I mean, I think they could be better than last year, but they've just had two of the worst back-to-back seasons in the history of the franchise, which is more than 80 years old. Uh, so I don't think anyone was expecting them to be great this year. I think that if they could move in a direction that felt like they were leaving chaos behind, that would be the most important thing. What are you surprised? That we're not talking about the nickname anymore. That yeah, thing. yeah. although if Robert Griffin III leaves town and then decides the right time, it would be the right time for him to comment on the nickname, I, our website would just explode, I think. <laughs> but you're right, we're not talking about the nickname and we're not talking about the Washington Nationals. I think you're absolutely right about that. that but do you think RG3 wants to talk about the nickname and he has chosen not to because he was he was on the team? No, I, I I can't say that. But I think that it, it would be an amazing, amazing heel turn if he left town and then decided oh it was the right time to come out. And are heads yeah. heads going to roll there with the Nationals? Uh, I don't know. My my impression, my guess would be that heads will not be rolling. But the fan base, to the the fans who are not paying attention to the Redskins obsessively, I think they are frustrated by some of the decisions that have been made with the roster construction and by the manager this season. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if Matt was safe there. And I was talking about Bryce Harper. By all accounts, he is the MVP, leading MVP candidate. But I don't know if he wins it if they don't make the playoffs, as great as his season has been. Yeah, and I think that his great season is really going to be one of the casualties of this because people have sort of stopped talking about that in in favor of talking about what went wrong and how did it go wrong and what happened with the starting rotation. And no one's talking about the fact that without him, do you know where this team would be without him right now? They would be... They, they would not be talking about the playoffs at all. That's for sure. Enjoy the drama, Dan. Can I tell you? Can I tell you when you mentioned Obama entering this yeah. uh, in 2012? Obama on a Fox pregame said, uh, "It's tough to unite this city around anything, but RG3 makes it look easy." It's just amazing. Four years later, how, I, how... I, you know, Paulie and I were talking about that off the air, and and when you look at where he was in 2012, and it was a landslide in Rookie of the Year. He's a household name. He's got Adidas. He's got Subway. Uh, you know, the the hopes of the franchise, making the playoffs. He's changed the position. I I mean. He sold more jerseys in one season than anyone ever had in the NFL. Man. But did it just, did it start when he went, when he got injured? And it just feels like his confidence level was shot soon after that. And then everybody started, he was a pinata. He was never the same player. Yeah. But, you know, that, that his falling out with Shanahan, which began in that offseason, was they never recovered from that. Yeah. All right, hey Dan, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. All right, that's uh, Dan Steinberg, Washington Post, DC Sports Blog.